You're seeing pictures from Boston this morning where runners from around the world are taking part in the Boston Marathon. The attack there six years ago today inspired a government sponsored program that turns bystanders into first responders. It's now being taught at some schools. Stop the Bleed teaches students medical techniques like how to tie a tourniquet and apply pressure to a wound. Don Daler is in Boston with how some students in the area are learning about trauma care. Don, good morning. Good morning. You know, it's been less than 20 years since doctors began teaching civilians CPR, and now a group of them want to make trauma training just as common. With the growth of terror attacks as well as mass shootings, they feel it's important to equip regular people, even students, with those life-saving skills. There you go. You can feel how tight it is. This isn't your ordinary high school science class. You save that leg. But a lesson on how to save lives. You need to apply enough pressure to keep that bleed on. Trained nurses show students how to apply the right amount of pressure against a wound and to use tourniquets to stop bleeding. So you have it's more pressure than you ever yeah. thought you had to use. It gets tiring. Yeah. I didn't expect that. If you ever were in a situation like that, in a trauma, uh, most of us can agree like we'd probably freak out. But this gave you like a little more sense of confidence. A person could bleed to death in a matter of minutes, precious time that can't be wasted waiting on first responders. And the instructors also mentioned that like at one point like adrenaline's going to kick in and then you're just going to have to get down to like you know how to do this, like trust yourself. And that's the point of this training. So in the event of an accident <laughs> or an act of violence like a school shooting, students can perform these life-saving functions quickly. Man, when you think you can't pack anymore, still pack. Dr. Reza Askari and Dr. Eric Goralnik are leading this Stop the Bleed class. If we can educate them, we can then empower them. This is sort of where CPR was 40 years ago, right? Instead of a heart attack, this is life-threatening bleeding. They were among the doctors at Boston's Brigham and Women's Hospital who embraced the program after tragedy struck their hometown six years ago. The tipping point for us really in Boston was the marathon bombing, and that demonstrated to us that the public wants to help. Three people died from the more than 200 who were injured. Experts credit bystanders and civilians who first came to the rescue. And we're laser focused on defining a research agenda for the next decade for Stop the Bleed. It was part of the discussion at this Stop the Bleed conference back in February. My story begins when my family was standing at the finish line of the Boston Marathon on that fateful day in April 2013. Audrey Epstein Rennie's 18-year-old daughter Jillian almost lost her life when the bombs went off. Those first few chaotic moments, a first responder at the scene rushed to our aid, took off his belt, grabbed my husband's belt, and assisted us in putting tourniquets on both of her legs. And since trauma is the number one cause of death for those under the age of 45, Plymouth Public School Superintendent Gary Maestas felt the program was important for his students. Our kids will be prepared for whatever they come in touch with. Including mass shootings. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that, that's, that's, a, that's a given. Is there a risk that some of these kids are going to be traumatized by this? Yeah, I think uh, the students that are in the programs that we have and we offer they have a great deal of understanding of the medical fields that they are going to be part of. Any concerns that you'd be kind of squeamish in, in a real situation? Probably Maybe at first. At first yeah. yeah, but once you realize that you know what to do to save this person's life, I think that will all go away and you'll just be focused on saving that person's life. It's most important. The doctors tell us that their ultimate goal is to roll this program out nationwide. They also want to equip all schools with one of these, a tourniquet for accidents or worse. Gail. Boy, Don, thank you very much. I do hope that they roll this out nationwide. Yeah. People need this information I, sooner rather than later. I, I like the idea of having those practical skills. Yeah. yeah. To show you that something that really can come in handy and save a life. Thank you again, Don Daly.